So welcome back. Um, what we're going to try and think about now is we're going to try and return to some of the approximations and simplifications that we made in the first uh, part of this course where we ignored uh, viscous stresses. And we now want to think about how we can maybe incorporate those. Uh, and the way that's done eventually is in something called the Navier-Stokes equations. And so we're going to spend um, a little bit of time now developing those equations. But just by way of recap, I uh, just want to remind us of where we are. We essentially started from a statement of Newton's second law, which we've expressed on a per volume basis. Uh, and we ended up with this equation that's known as the Cauchy momentum equation. Uh, and just to remind ourselves what it says in words, uh, on the left hand side, we essentially have density or mass per volume multiplied by a term that tells us about acceleration. Um, this term is our idea of a material derivative, and so we developed this idea of a material derivative or an operator dv by dt. Um, and that notation, uh, capital D, was to tell us that what we really mean is the acceleration following a little material element as it flows through space. So we might have a material moving through space uh, and we'll follow both changes in velocity at a fixed point in time uh, and uh, or a fixed point in space and how that changes in time. And then we'll also follow what happens when I uh, move through space. Um, and so that's the uh, mass times acceleration part of Newton's second law. On the other side are all of the forces that are acting on the system. Uh, and so we had the action of surface forces. They came from a traction vector. And then we converted a traction vector, which was n dot tau, into a body force uh, per unit volume, or a force per unit volume, uh, that we said uh, looked like the divergence of the stress. Um, and then that was combined with a true statement of a body force per unit volume, which came from gravity. Uh, the challenge we have with this equation is that it's not closed, uh, in the sense that even though we might know that the stress is symmetric, we're only going to think about the symmetric uh, 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 stress here, so that tau is equal to tau transpose. That means that that has six unknown components in general. We have three unknown components of velocity, and so we have at least nine uh, components uh, of things that we have to solve for. Yet this is a nonlinear differential equation that really is only three differential equations because we've got uh, um, a vector equation here for vx, vy, and vz. Uh, we might be able to combine that with one more statement. Uh, so if this was conservation of momentum, we might com uh, combine this with conservation of mass. Um, but that will also only give us, at most, one additional uh, equation. Um, and that basically is a statement about fractional changes in density following a material element as being associated with the divergence of the velocity. Uh, so again, we still really don't have enough equations. What we did in the first module, however, is to say that we're going to neglect viscous stresses. Um, and we introduced the idea of an inviscid fluid where the only stress was uh, coming from uh, the isotropic inward pointing pressure, which we called P. So if I substitute this uh, into here, uh, then my equation becomes uh, um, the equation that we spent most of the first module um, thinking about, which was that the, um, the mass per volume times the acceleration was equal to minus gradients of the pressure plus the body force per unit volume. Um, and so this was the Euler equation. Um, however, we want to go a little further than that now. And so we want to introduce the idea that what we really want is not just this uh, um, uh, stress that comes from pressure, but we want uh, an additional contribution to the stress. And so we're going to write the total stress now as equal to uh, this isotropic part, uh, which comes from the inward facing pressure. Um, and then an additional contribution that comes from viscous stresses. Um, and uh, many people use different notations for this. Um, we'll use the idea of a, of a stress sigma. Um, and so this is um, the viscous stress. Um, sometimes you'll also see it called uh, the deviatoric stress. 
Um, and so if you read other books, you may see it called this. We have to be very careful about the differences between these two if a material is compressible. So if we're dealing with compression, uh, then there can be additional contributions to the deviatoric uh, stress. But in general, uh, for the rest of this course, we can use these two terms interchangeably. And it's essentially the stress that arises associated with viscous action when the fluid flows. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to also uh, recognize that if this is symmetric and this is symmetric, then we certainly expect um, that, that, uh, um, that we'll have that the extra stress is also symmetric. So we'll have a symmetric ad extra stress or additional stress. Um, so that's one thing that will make our life easier. Um, and secondly, we're only going to consider the idea of what people call a Newtonian fluid. So Newton, in his study about uh, fluid flow, pointed out that uh, he expected, as he said in words, that if you double the rate of velocity or the, the double the rate of sliding, that you would double the stress acting in the material. So essentially, we're going to think about a linear relationship between uh, the st the, this viscous stress uh, and the rate of, of fluid motion. And we're going to spend a little bit of time thinking about how we are going to do that. But essentially, we're going to end up with a linear relationship. Um, between um, this extra stress uh, and some function um, of the gradients of the velocity fields. Um, and we'll have to spend a little bit of time thinking about how uh, we de develop that relationship. Uh, if you're interested in more complicated materials, uh, many materials, uh, um, for example, toothpastes or foods such as mayonnaise or ketchup, um, are complex fluids. Um, or sometimes they'll be called non-Newtonian fluids. Um, and as you might imagine, the key thing about, about those is typically that they'll have a non-linear relationship. So this function might be nonlinear for those kinds of materials. That, of course, gives rise to lots of added complexity, and we're not going to consider that any further in this class. So what we've got now is we're going to have a set of equations that's going to give us a relationship between the stress and the velocity gradient. Uh, this is a tensor, so this is going to give rise to, even though it's symmetric, it'll give us six equations. Uh, and those six equations plus the three equations that we have here plus the statement about conservation of mass is going to give us 10 equations for 10 unknowns. Uh, and so the 10 unknowns that we have um, that we're typically going to want to think about uh, is uh, the components of the velocity. So those would be three components of the velocity. One component of our scalar pressure. Um, and then six uh, components um, of our stress tensor, um, which, of course, is equal to its transpose. So that'll give us uh, 10 equations that we're going to have to solve. That's a very complicated set of equations. And so what we'd like to do is we'd like to try and eliminate Um, the stress um, from this expression um, by substituting um, this relationship, uh, which is either going to be a Newtonian fluid uh, or a non-Newtonian fluid. And so that relationship is going to be a very important one that we're going to have to develop. Um, and so that uh, uh, a relationship that we're going to substitute in here um, with this um, is going to be called, um, it's often called an equation of state, or sometimes a constitutive equation. Um, and essentially what it is, is indeed um, an equation of state for the viscous stress.
Uh, and so if we have a nice equation, we're going to be able to substitute that in here. We'll get rid of uh, six of these unknowns. So really what we need to do next is we need to develop for a Newtonian fluid this idea of uh, an equation of state that's going to relate the stress to the velocity gradients in the material.